Bell Witch. This story begins in the year 1804. John Bell and his family lived in a house on 300 acres of land. It was famous in Adams, Tennessee. They were living happily. But after 10 years had passed, something happened in 1817 that was such a turning point that it changed their life forever. One evening, John Bell came to his daughter Elizabeth's room and saw what she was doing, embroidery. Elizabeth, are you not asleep yet, my dear daughter? Yes, Papa. I'm just going to sleep now. Elizabeth lays down on her bed, and John covers her with a bedsheet, and he is about to extinguish the candle. No, Papa. Let the candle be, please. I'm afraid of the dark. You were never afraid of the dark before. What happened, Elizabeth? I can't really explain it, Papa, but sometimes I feel a strange fear in my heart. Oh, we'll talk about this tomorrow. You go get some sleep now. Elizabeth is sleeping with a bedsheet covering her. Suddenly, strong winds start blowing and lightning streaks. The sound of a creaking door, opening ever so slowly, reached her ears, and it seemed that a shadow was standing at Elizabeth's feet, her long, wild hair flying. Her eyes are just visible, and she slowly pulled down Elizabeth's bedsheet from her face. Elizabeth pulls up the bedsheet again. The dark figure pulls the bedsheet off her. At this, finally Elizabeth opens her eyes, and as she wakes up, the witch starts flying round in the air. Upon seeing this, Elizabeth cries out in fear. Papa! Papa! Save me, Papa! John ran and came through the open door. What happened, Elizabeth? I, did you did you have a nightmare? Elizabeth had lost her voice. All she could do was just stare upwards and think of that horrible incident that she could not get out of her mind's eye. Papa, can I sleep in your room, please? I don't want to sleep here. Okay, dear, but we will not disturb Mummy. I will sleep here with you. Mummy's health is not feeling well. The next day, Elizabeth's mother, Frida, was drying the clothes outside when Elizabeth arrived. Dear Eliza, did you have a nightmare yesterday? No, mother. It was all true. You think I'm lying, but everything really did happen. Okay, dear, you go to your room. I'll prepare lunch and let you know when it's ready. Elizabeth leaves to go to her room. Frida is coming inside the house after drying clothes. When the witch sees Frida going into the house, she quickly flies towards her, and all the clothes fall to the ground. When Frida looks back, the witch is standing in front of her. The cruel-hearted witch attacks the poor woman and scratches at Frida's arms while kicking her. Frida crumples to the ground in defeat. Elizabeth hurriedly comes to her mother's aid and sees that the witch is holding Frida's throat and raising her in the air. Elizabeth is terrified at this horrible sight. Mother! Leave my mother! Go away from here, you vile creature! (laughs) I will not leave anyone alone, not one. I will kill everyone. I will come again. And this time, I will kill each and every last one of you. Then, the witch disappeared. The shaken mother and daughter start crying, and John arrives on the scene. He's frightened upon seeing the condition of his family. We have to do something about this. I can't see my family like this. I will now write a letter to my friend Jackson. He is a paranormal activist, and he will help us. Till then... We will stick together. At night, John and his family are sitting together, John holding a cross in his hands and guarding Frida and Elizabeth. All of a sudden, a voice reaches his ears. John, save me, John. He feels that voice is of Frida. Then, that voice becomes the voice of Elizabeth. Father, save me, Father. John sees Elizabeth and Frida sleeping. He realizes that the witch has arrived there. John hears a heavy, world-shattering scream. It was so intense that the cross falls from his hands, clattering to the floor. 
As a chair comes flying across the cross and falls onto it, John starts looking for the cross. At the same time, he hears the sound of screaming. When he looks back, the evil witch is slapping Elizabeth senseless. Leave my family be. Let them go. That's when Jackson enters the scene and he shows the witch the cross. Upon beholding the cross, the witch hides within a conjured cloud. Why are you here? Why are you harassing John's family? The witch angrily looks at John and grabs Frida's hair and drags her away. Ask me who I am, John. Don't you recognize me, John? Don't you know who I am? I'm Cat Bats, whom you killed ten years ago. For so many years, I've been yearning for revenge. Now my strength has increased, and I will not leave anyone alone. I will destroy this entire family. If he tries to save his family, then John must die. Must die! I will destroy the whole family. Everyone is surprised by this. John is shocked and suddenly starts crying. Who was Cat? John, tell us who was Cat. Cat was our neighbor, and out of 300 acres that we owned, 200 acres were her land. At that time, my family didn't move into this home. My eyes were on Cat's land. I went to talk with her one day. She refused to give me the land, and my ego was hurt. So one night I murdered her and took all of her land. Papa, I had no idea you were such a wicked-hearted, conniving man. I'm ashamed of you. The witch wants revenge. The only way she'll be appeased is by John's death. Otherwise, she'll continue to haunt and torture this family like this. Suddenly, all the candles start extinguishing. Once again, the witch, with rage in her eyes, makes her presence known. Going to Elizabeth and Frida, she grabs each of them by their respective throats and lifts them violently into the air. What do you think, John? Want to see the death of your entire family in front of your eyes? John is shocked and moves slowly and takes the knife which is on the table and stabs himself. Obviously satisfied, the witch releases the poor mother and daughter and disappears from there. Elizabeth and Frida run to John's side, weeping. Forgive me. Forgive me. If you can. <sighs> the End